Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Janina Jeff, staff bioinformatics scientist here at Illumina. And today I have the pleasure of talking to one of my good friends, Dr. Brandon Ogbuno. Did I say that right? You sure did. Okay, Thank why you. don't you tell the world a little bit about yourself? Great, my name is Brandon Obunu. I'm a computational biologist at Yale University and my laboratory studies the evolutionary genomics of disease. Tell me a little bit about your career journey and how you wound up in the genomics era. Ooh. Wow, I mean, how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, is a, this is Obama rapid fire, so we'll give you two, okay, two three minutes. Okay, no, 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 <laughs> I'll give you the quick version, which in many ways captures the essence. I think, um, I think if I've done anything well, it's that I've been able to be agile with my career and my skill sets. I have this syndrome where I'm never focusing on one thing at a time. I'm never majoring in one thing at school. I'm always in combined programs. And so I'm always thinking about the multiplicity in terms of how science is and where it's going. I've always done that. And I think um, when I finished my PhD uh, in, in 2010, I did it in kind of virus evolution and epidemiology, but I was thinking to myself, okay, well, what, what's actually, what's going, what's the next thing? And I actually, yeah, I trained medically. I could have gone into a clinical career. I had that option. I could have gone into data consulting. But I ended up taking this postdoc at the Broad Institute at Harvard University where uh, I studied and learned a lot about population genetics and computational biology. And I was mostly self-taught in that regard. Um, and really, since then, I've just carried that forward and it's become who I am. Early on, not too long after the sequencing of the human genome, we were focusing on one gene at a time. We didn't even fathom different disciplines. And now it is almost becoming a part of everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about how taking all these disciplines mm -hmm. makes genomics better, that's or does right. it? Yeah, no, that's a great, great question. And I think part of the reason why it's a challenging question for a lot of people is, you know, when you're a genomics and a genetics enthusiast like I am and like you are, you want that to be the answer for everything, right? We just want to be able to sequence things, get a clear answer and be able to help people or understand who we are or understand how to treat things, right? And where my work comes in is it's saying it's not quite that simple. The solutions are gonna end up being complicated and complex and genomic solutions are gonna be central. Genomic information will be central to them, but we have to think carefully about what that information is, the way that genes and environment interact, the way genes, different SNPs are interacting, the notion of complex phenotypes that are composed of individual phenotypes. How do we actually search for the genetic underpinnings of that? Um, we know about Mendelian diseases, things that are very, very simple, but most of the problems that we're facing and most things we're interested in aren't that simple. So where my work comes in is being able to lean in and embrace that complexity, because that actually makes the problems more beautiful, and it, all, and it makes, and it's, and it's just more fun that way, I think. Yeah, and I mean, one thing, um, you know, you talk a lot about, and I think kind of adds value, we've been talking about this ecosystem of how to make genetics more mm -hmm. diverse. And uh, one of them is having diverse scientists. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that you and other scientists of mm -hmm. color with a lived experience mm -hmm. and you having a lived experience as a black man in this right. country, mm -hmm. we can start to think about how do these social mm -hmm. determinants of health that we've never measured before, mm -hmm. how do we incorporate them into genetics? And I think, so I, I just wanna hear a little bit about mm -hmm. how your lived experience mm -hmm kind of also adds to your work mm -hmm. and bringing these disciplines together yeah. and kind of like answering these big questions. Yeah, so I'll start by giving a, a, a big compliment. A compliment, I, I can't, it, that's, it doesn't get much bigger than what I'm about to say. And really talking to you, when I talk to you, a brilliant modern geneticist, I think about what my mother would have been if she had had more opportunities, mm. okay? And I was raised by an African-American woman from Baltimore, Maryland. She raised me by herself. And she had more talent than I do, mm. no question. Naturally gifted in all these ways. What's the difference between me and her is the opportunities. So when we're thinking about, well, I didn't need a lot of lessons on how genes and the environment interact or the way kind of, uh, you know, our experiences influence. She also suffers from a bunch of illnesses, mm. right? That are, the, you know, of course, the interaction between what's in her genome, some of them affect me as well, mm -hmm. but how they affect us is different, again, because I've had so many more privileges and opportunities than she's had. And, you know, and so uh, you're a good example of the kind of, uh, what, what that lesson means to me. And I've carried that into my actual technical science. Now I'm profoundly uh, interested in the way that the environment is tuning uh, genetics and, and the phenotypes that they confer. So social determinants of health, mm -hmm. I think, is something that we need to talk about more mm -hmm. when we talk about genetics. Um, 
Is there, because, you know, you coming into the field and you're seeing everything that everyone's talking about, is there mm -hmm. something that you think people aren't talking about that we should be talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think what's beautiful about genetics, again, is that we can sequence things and we get the very clear picture of what's in your genome, what's in my genome, what's in everyone's genome. I think we need to add the same type of rigor to the way that we study the environment and how social determinants are influencing right, what's happening. So for example, take SARS-CoV-2 and the COVID-19 pandemic. Are there kind of human genetic, genetic, genomic kind of determinants which influence health? Of course there are. We've identified some things that are associated with severe disease. We've associated some things that are protective, right? We think of severe disease and that's unquestionably true. But you look what happened in the United States where the indigenous community was affected right, the worst pretty much from the beginning. The African-American community and Latinx communities and, and South, uh, some parts of the South Asian community as well. Right? What is the explanation for that? Well, there hasn't been a genomic smoking gun there. Mm -hmm. Now, is, is genetics at work in, the, in that phenotype and of that outcome? Of course it is. But what we're learning is that it is a lot of these structural things about how people live together, the type of jobs that they have, what they have access to, the way they're treated at the bedside. All of these things are forces that end up dictating, right, who ends up severely ill um, and who isn't. And I think, right, the true future of this is going to be in the integration of the modern genomic technology, which me and you use and love, and these other disciplines that offer insight into how people are living. Yeah. Okay, so I have one last big picture question. All right. Go for it. How do you see genomics impacting the lives of Black people? 25 years from now? Ooh. Ooh. Well, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot to <laughs> disentangle there, right? So one of them is, what do we mean by a black person? Okay. And I think genomics can help us kind of get an answer to what that means, right? So for example, me and you have this experience of being black people in this country. Uh, my father, who did not raise me, is from, right, from West Africa, right? And so we, as African Americans, are a deeply admixed population, as are most people in, in countries that were colonized, right? And genomically, that's a much more, that's a complicated problem to disentangle, right? So being a black person in America, statistically and genomically means something different, right, than being a black person in other parts of the world. So maybe we can kind of inform conversations about what that really means. So that's yeah. a major, major dimension. And I think, you know, by extension, yeah, a lot of the health problems which plague our community, right? I think absolutely there are going to be genetic underpinnings there. And I think the modern technology can help us get after exactly what components of that disparity are genetic and which of those are related to our historical plight and our current kind of uh, plight in many parts of the world. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of an answer. All right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <sighs> Yesterday, Francis talked about the lack of diversity in mm -hmm. genomics mm -hmm. and shortly after said that genomics should not be reserved for mm -hmm. the wealthy mm -hmm. and the lucky. Mm -hmm. How did you feel hearing that? Uh, I, I think it's it's profound. I mean, I think, you know, it's always a shame when modern technologies affect only the people who can afford it or who are around, like, like the, the, you know, the lucky, like was said there. But I think this one in particular is worse. This is not just like space travel or it's not just like video gaming or, or you know, other types of technology. Genomics has the ability to tell us the story of who we are as a species. Yeah. And so because of that reason, it is deeply right, problematic to kind of only be sampling a sliver of what, right, what, what human beings are. I think the diver genomic diversity is the story of the species. It is who we are. And ultimately, that's where all the answers are going to come from. Um, and so it is imperative that we make this a whole species project mm -hmm. and not just people who can afford it or happen to be around or happen to be, exist in a handful of countries around the world. OK, I love it. I'm going to end with one of my favorite genetics quotes not by a geneticist, mm -hmm. but by a profound black woman, mm -hmm. by Maya Angelou. And one of the things that she says that mm -hmm. I think is a genomics principle, like who knew she was a human geneticist? Um, we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Mm -hmm. And when I think about the genome, mm -hmm. I think about the things that we're learning, mm -hmm. really is we're one species. Mm -hmm. And we have this opportunity to use genomics to celebrate our differences. Mm -hmm and to create community around the things that we share. And so thank you so much for talking with us and coming and doing all these great things here. This is great. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you're doing here. And no, really, a fan. I'm a big, big Me fan. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>